Sam told me that you are going this month through Psalms, and uh, one Psalm was really on my heart, and I can say that is my favorite Psalm. It's Psalm 91. I had to have these two stands because I have uh, a heavy Bible here. You know, I'm from Baptist Church, so we must have heavy Bibles. So uh, don't get confused if you see these two stands here. And I have my notes here as a you know Baptist pastor. We always do that when we have a preaching lab uh, for the students. Uh, when we teach them, we always tell them, write notes. You cannot just stand up and preach. I mean, you can, but it's better to have the notes and to know what you are going to say, and then the Lord will really bless uh, his word. So it is the case today here, and I'm really happy to be here. So before we read uh, Psalm 91, which is really a great psalm, a great encouragement for all of us, for me personally, and I hope for you, or it will be maybe for you after this sermon, to start with, I will give you a small example, and I believe that all of you know about the National Geographic Channel or Animal Planet Channel, uh, where we can see and learn how does the animal world works. And I was watching a show where they, they showed a lot of eagles and how they take care for their little ones. So the commentator was speaking about the eagles and how great they are, how great span of the wings they have, and they have their small ones in their nest. So what happens, he said, and this is what uh, remained in my, my, my memory, when the mother leaves and if she is a bit longer away, the little ones, the little birds, little eagles, they get confused because they are very hungry. They don't know what to do. Their mother is not there to cover them with its wings. The mother is not there to give them warmth. Want. The mother is not there to encourage them, to help them grow. And just for a little while, they can start biting each other. Even the stronger one can need the smaller one. If we compare this to our Christian lives, what happens when we are not daily in communion with our God? When we think that we can do better without God? Or when we feel that God left us. God promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So he never does that. But we feel that way sometimes. So we get confused. We start arguing. We start complaining to God. And it's really, it's really a good example to compare how the mother eagle takes care of, their, of its little ones. So God takes care of us. And this psalm is really... Very, very encouraging to me. So let us, let us read it all together. It says from verse 1, Psalm 91, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save me from the flower snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample and great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life 
will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. We see in the last few verses, I will protect, protect him. I will deliver him. So we see from this psalm that God is on our side. God wants to protect us. God wants to be with us always. He wants to guide our lives. He wants to be our shield. He wants to be our protector. When we look at the psalm as a whole, as a one complete psalm, we can say that it is the prayer of somebody who has taken refuge in the security of the temple. We see that verses 1 and 2. The psalmist is confident that God's presence will protect the people in every dangerous situation. We see that verses 3 to 13. And the final verses, we see promising of salvation to those who trust in God, 14 to 16. So we can break this psalm in three points, and we see these things. Again, there are three things that I would like you to see from this psalm, and that we will focus on. And it is about the one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. First of all, the one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High is the one who loves the Lord. So it is the one who loves the Lord. Secondly, it is the one who acknowledges God's name. And thirdly, it is the one who calls upon God. So love the Lord, acknowledge the Lord, calls upon God. These three things we see in the person who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Before we go deeply into the psalm, we have to understand what does it mean to dwell in the shelter of the Most High. What does the psalmist want to, to say to us, to share with us? To get the big picture and put all these 16 verses into one sentence, the psalm is teaching us that God is the protector of those who love him. We need to remember this sentence out of this psalm. God is the protector of those who love him. Having this in mind, I would like us to focus and emphasize several things started from verse 1. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. My question here is, what is the shelter of the Most High? What is our shelter? What is your shelter? When you're in trouble, when you're in, in need, when you're confused, when you don't know spiritually whether to go left or right, what is our shelter in those moments? Does it mean that a temple or a church is actually a shelter of the Most High? Somebody can ask. Because when we look at the psalm, the psalm 91, historically we can also see that it functioned as a blessing by a temple priest for worshippers who were seeking to find refuge, to find security, to be encouraged. The temple priest would stand up and read Psalm 91 to encourage people in the temple. So is the temple then the shelter of the Most High, or the church today. A good example here would be many Orthodox Christians in Serbia, and you, know, you already know that, I don't need to tell you, but they go to church when they are in need or when, they, you know, when they're in trouble. So in those moments, they try to find a priest and ask him, uh, can he help or can he pray? Or go in the church and, you know, just cross like that and, and, and kiss an icon or whatever. They think that the, the church is the shelter. I have a friend, an Orthodox, and he told me, how beautiful do I feel when I enter into the Orthodox church and I feel that nice smell. He says, I feel that divine presence is there. Just because of the smell, just because of those Icons, pictures, statues, whatever it is in the church? No. David, actually the psalmist, doesn't speak about this. 
He is not saying that the shelter is the temple or the church today. The encouragement that we get from this psalm is that the shelter of the Most High is a place of intimacy where only we individually come to the Lord. It is truly one of a kind. We can have individual contact with God wherever we are. We don't have to be in the church building or in a place like this today. We can come to God wherever we are. There is no other place like that. It is a unique place because we are unique. We are unique to God. God is unique to us. We have that unique relationship with God. And he's our shelter. It is a place where we can come apart from this world, from all our worries and troubles and problems and temptations we meet daily. We come to God. We come to pray with, to him. We come to have close relationship with him. This is the shelter of the Most High. No church is the shelter. God is the shelter. Our close relationship with him, he is our shelter. He is the Most High, and this shelter, he has to be visited on a daily basis. So it becomes a way of life. Not a shelter once in a while. Not a shelter only on Sunday or Wednesday. When we go to church or when we meet Christians. This shelter has to be visited on a daily basis. Every day we have to have a close relationship with God. This, this is something continually, something that goes on every day, every morning. No matter what, what is around us or who is around us, no matter what we may face or what we are facing at that moment, nothing will be able to break that intimate relationship with God that we have. Wherever we are, we can stop and pray. We can walk and pray to God. We can drive and pray to God. He is always with us. He is our hiding place where we always can run to and be secure. And we know that he will take care about us. We are sure in that. We have experienced that. And we know that he is our refuge. He is our God who is our protector. Protector of those who love him. Now continuing in verse 1. If we dwell in the shelter of the Most High. Now we know what does it mean and who is the Most High. Or what place is the Most High. We also rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Meaning that the Lord is always with us. His shadow is upon us. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, we have to say that we are in spiritual war today. It is a battle of good versus evil. The kingdom of light versus the kingdom of darkness. And as we have the mighty warrior on our side, the Lion of Judah, as the Old Testament calls him, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, we will always win. Sometimes it doesn't look that we win. Sometimes we face difficulties. We face things that we would never imagine that we will face. But even in those moments, God is still our protector. Even if something bad happens to us, God is still our protector because he knows about it. He takes care of us. No enemy can ever reach us if we continually rest in his presence. In the shelter of the Most High, we get covered with his shadow. God covers us with his presence. The shadow of the Almighty, which is ever present. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't go away. He's always upon us. The verse 2 goes right along with verse 1 as we see the connection between the shelter of the Most High and the word refuge. So we find refuge in the shelter of the Most High and then between shadow of the Almighty and the word fortress. His shadow is our fortress that nobody can shake or break or move. A refuge is to be a place of rest and security place of intimate worship and communion with the Father. 
and a fortress relating to being under the shadow of the Almighty is a place where we war from, where we battle from, where we, where we are doing our best with God to fight evil and to win. God is the winner. He already won. So why are we afraid then? He already won. He overcame evil. He overcame Satan. He overcame sin by raising from the dead. And that is our biggest assurance that we are already winners. We are daily in war with evil, which means we need daily protection. We need to have constant relationship with the Lord. We need to spend time daily with him. What happens if we do not? We lose the battle and we get overcome by evil. But even if we lose the battle, God is still there with us. Maybe he let us lose the battle to teach us a lesson. But again, he gives us a hand. He raises us up. What happens with the little birds that we mentioned at the beginning when their mother is not around? We already heard that. They can even kill each other. They can even eat up each other. If we do not spend time with the Lord daily and seek his presence and dwell in his shelter, we slowly die spiritually. Now, how do we prevent this from happening that we do not die spiritually? Or we feel like that, maybe. So far, we have seen what does it mean to dwell in the shelter of the Most High. But let us now examine ourselves. Do we, every one of us here, do we dwell daily in the shelter of the Most High? Do we have that close relationship with the Lord through reading the Bible, through praying to Him, being friends with other Christians, with others around us? Not once in a while, but every day do we dwell in the shelter of the Most High. In verses 14 to 16, we see these three things that I would like us to focus on that we mentioned in the beginning. Three things that the one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High does. And we also see blessings and promises of God with each of these points. First of all, the one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High loves the Lord, verse 14. He loves the Lord. Do we love the Lord? Do you love the Lord, brothers and sisters here? Amen. And it's a blessing, amen. Yeah, we, we love the Lord. And we want to dwell in the shelter of the Most High on a daily basis. Verse 14 clearly says, it is God's response to a prayer. It says, because he loves me. Because he loves me. The one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High is the one who loves the Lord. Love the Lord. In the New Testament, we see this is the commandment. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. We have to love our Lord, love our God. And we love him, the Bible says, because he first loved us. Do we love the Lord with all that we are? Or we just love him occasionally, whenever it fits us. If we do not have this close relationship with God on a daily basis, if we do not dwell in the shelter of the Most High on daily, ba on daily basis, we should, we should examine our hearts. We should ask Lord to examine our hearts. And when we have the love for the Lord, we will see his blessing. We will see his protection. He says in verse 14, because he loves me, I will rescue him. Because he loves me, I will rescue him. God indeed rescues those he loves. You probably have a lot of examples how God rescued those he loves. Spiritually and physically speaking, both. If I may, I would like to take you back in 1999, when our country was bombed. The record in those days showed that not even one evangelical Christian was killed. Many were injured. Bad things happened. But God protected them overall. 
Many of them were called to go to war. My uncle, who is from Kosovo, he was in the war from the first day. My cousin was in the war as well. I was invited. But luckily, my wife and I were in Budapest in those days studying. So we couldn't come back. And I didn't want to come back. And God really rescued them all. He was the protector of his children during those days. Literally rescued them from many dangerous situations. He says, because he loves me, I will rescue him. There are many examples that I could share with you, but there is no time today. Another small example that I will mention uh, next to my, uh, my wife's uh, 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 parents' house where they live, uh, uh, a huge bomb fell. And we were studying in those days uh, in, in Budapest. But nothing happened. The bomb did not explode. Was it just by accident? Or God did not allow it? I would say that God did not allow it because there were people who loved the Lord. The bomb could have killed who knows how many people and houses. But there were people who loved the Lord and nothing happened to them. The psalmist is saying about that. Thousands and ten thousands will, will, will fall next to you, but it will not harm you. God will protect you. Now I have to just came into my mind to share with you a small joke. Yes, this is a very serious topic, but I couldn't resist. I was talking to my friend about this, you know, and he said uh, to me after sharing with, this, uh, with him about this story, he said the bomb fell near your in-laws, mm -hmm. especially near, near your mother-in-law, and you're happy about it. <laughs> Yeah, I come from Baptist Church. We don't say too many jokes during the sermon, but I'm here today with you, so. <laughs> it's right. My wife will forgive me as well, she knows. He says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. It is like that, really. Because he loves me, I will rescue him. Sometimes rescue in our eyes maybe mean something else. We might, we might say, but God did not rescue me the way I want it. But later on we see that God really rescued us. Secondly, the one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High acknowledges God's name. We praise his name. I will protect him because he acknowledges my name. It means that the one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High praises God, exalts God all the time. In the following Psalms 92.5, it says, how great are your works, O Lord. How profound your thoughts. Psalm 90, 139, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. There are so many, so many verses in the Bible where we can see the praise of God in all the New Testament. All the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, Paul speaks in Romans. Praise is God. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. I will protect him, says the Lord. God says that. Another example here would be also, also during the war. We as a, as a church, we started a charity, humanitarian organization, Love Your Neighbor. And during those days of wars, terrible things were happening. And... My father had to deliver the van of goods to the hospital. He was in the van, and you know that feeling that you, you think you forgot something. It happens to us. He went back to his office trying to see what did he forget. He forgot actually the packing list of the goods in the van. So he went back to the van, started the van, and in those days he heard the sirens, you know, war sirens when the planes are coming, and exactly the parking lot where he had to park in front of the hospital was bombed. Cars destroyed, destroyed all around. God literally protected him from parking the car on that spot. 
He thought he forgot something, and he really did forget something. But I think God had to do something with that. He made him forget it, not to go in that place. So God knew about it. And God stopped him from going there. God is our protector. Verse 7 says, A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your hand, but it will not come near you. And I can say it was literally like that. And we can share many examples too. I was in Portugal, in Lisbon, in May, some meetings about the seminary, and there was a pastor from Ukraine. And he literally explained this sound to me. He said it's a terror of the night and terror in the day. A terrible things he has seen by his eyes of the war. And together we pray for God to have mercy, to God to have mercy and stop this evil happening. God rescues those who love him, protects those who acknowledge his name. We have a missionary uh, in Nish and in Bela Palanka, even south from Nish, uh, from Russia. He used to be a pastor in Ukraine, a pastor in Russia. Now he's a missionary in Serbia. His friend from Ukraine called him and said to him, I just went to get some water for the family. And I said to the whole family, a lot of kids and wife, let's all go with a lot of bottles and take a lot of water back. When they returned, the home was not there any longer. The bomb destroyed it. So God protected those who love him. Many, many examples we can share, all of us here. Thirdly, the one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High calls upon God. We call him on a daily basis. We call him all the time. The one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High loves the Lord, acknowledges God, and calls upon God. He will call me, says and I will answer him, verse 15. The one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High calls upon God. But not only that God will answer when we call, but he will be with us in the trouble. He will rescue us, and he will be, us, be with us and see us go through the trouble. He will deliver us and honor us as we seek his help. Verse 16, it says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God is the protector of those who love him. God is great and all-powerful, all-knowing, always there when we need him. Sometimes it may seem that he is not with us. The troubles we face may be so overwhelming, so great, that we feel that he's so far away from us. But no, he's just one prayer away, if we can say it that way. He's always with us. We have to believe these words in this psalm, I will answer him. These are the words of the Lord. He's promising to us when we call him, he will answer us. God is the protector of those who love him, of those who acknowledge his name, and of those who call upon his name. What we can say in conclusion from this psalm? The psalm is really great encouragement to all of us. Personally, to me very much so, and I believe to all of you. These are the powerful words, words that bring hope and comfort, both physically and spiritually. As I said, we are in, spirit, in spiritual war today, the ongoing war. Let the words of this psalm be rooted deep into our hearts so that when, when we fight the evil, we can proclaim the victory in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ because he is the one who is victorious and he is our God and he is on our side and he will never leave us. He is the protector of those who love him. Do you love your God 
Do you love your Lord? Do you give all your time to him? Not once in a while, as we mentioned a few many times now, but always, daily. Verses 9 and 10 say, says, if you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent if you make the most high your dwelling place. This word, if, is very important here. If you make the most high your dwelling, will you do that? Will you invite the Lord in your life? Will you ask him to be your guide, your way? Will you do that? Will you let the most high be your dwelling place? And if we do that, we will experience great things with God. Even the greatest difficulties in our lives and struggles will become small when we believe and rely on the huge God that he is. Let him be our fortress. Let him be the place where we battle from. And rest assured that we will always win. And if, even if it doesn't seem so in the situation, we are still winners because he has won already. Will you make the Lord your dwelling place? Let him cover you with the wings and you will really rest in the shadow of the Almighty, today and forevermore. Amen.